analyzed live right here, right now. Mm -hmm. We were both suspicious about the background. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. Well, that's in the studio. We already talked about that. So I would certainly say for that tour and 95, there almost likely was something going on there. For live without a net, I mean, I don't know. Honestly, I wouldn't bet against them, and here's why. Right. For live without a net, if they knew it was going to DVD, they could have went in there after the fact. Mm. and post-production sweeten the background vocals. Right, right. As for the actual show itself, I'd like to think not. But 1986, I mean, honestly, they probably would not have been the only band sweetening things up by that time. But they really weren't into that mode yet. That really didn't start, like, until the Monsters of Rock Festival tour they were doing where Ed was playing keyboards but then you notice there were still keyboards and he wasn't playing anymore because he switched to guitar. Right. So they could have also switched to background vocal sweetening or enhancement or whatever you want to call it. And then by for unlawful carnal knowledge, they were all in, baby. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. So I wouldn't bet against it like you. I'd like to think that for 1986, they didn't do that. Right. But if somebody actually came and said, no, I've got proof that they did, I, I wouldn't bet against them. Absolutely. I wouldn't doubt them at all, True. sadly. True. True. And number 12 in our last letter comes from Dave Blackburn from Dry Ridge, Kentucky. And he says, Dave, another day, another day of another guy from Kentucky. Or did we do Kentucky or was it Kansas? I was Kansas. I'm sorry. Kansas, Kansas. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, stop assuming everybody from the Midwest is all from the same state. Dave. Oh my Come god. On. Look at you. Always trying to get me in trouble. Always trying well, to bait me. Well, you know, I <laughs> just want to just let you know that uh, you know, not everybody from England is jolly good, Dave. Yeah, you're so just, just sore you know. about the girl gone bad situation. That's all. You're right. That's you, right. Yes, you absolutely right. hit the nail on the head. Yes. I'm I'm still brooding over that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He says, hey, Dave and Dave, longtime listener, first time emailer. My name is Dave Blackburn, and I'm from Dry Ridge, Kentucky. Which, by the way, I want to say Dave Blackburn from Dry Ridge, Kentucky. That's a real masculine name. Like, it sounds like that would be a great football player. You know what I mean? Like, Dave Blackburn. Blackburn takes the field. You know, like, it just sounds great. Anyway, great name. Uh, I'm a hardcore Van Halen fan like the two of you, and I love both eras, but I'm really wanting a good live bootleg of the DLR era, and I was wanting your advice on something. What would be the best bootleg from 81 to 84 that's not crackling or dipping in sound? And also, do you think there will be any VH action in 2019? Thank you, and keep up doing what you're doing, Dave Blackburn from Kentucky. I'm a big fan of the 1981 Martial Law double disc from Philadelphia. It's off the Fair Warning Tour. I love that bootleg. I think that's definitely one worth checking out. Anyone you want to offer up to Dave? Man, 81 to 84. Yeah. That is tough, except the... 82 and 83 Diver Down Tour had mm-hmm. some good quality soundboard. Yeah. What about the Uruguay on one? That's a good one. Well, that is my personal favorite. Right. But that one, actually, but that, if, if, he's, if he's concerned about dips in quality, I wouldn't actually go with that one. Okay. Because it's taped off the radio. It's a little up and down. I mean, if you're looking for just quality and not necessarily performance, right. then the Us Festival is for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. And quite frankly, the US Festival is not like the horror show that some people make it out to I be. I totally agree. But quality wise, you can definitely find a good bootleg of that. Like we said in past episodes, the South American shows, those are decent quality. There's also one from, oh, let's see, it was from 1982 and it is a soundboard or, or a video from, I want to say it's like, oh, it's like, it's either DC or Virginia, or Maryland, somewhere like, because I, I always get confused because Dave keeps calling it one place, and he's technically not in that place. He's in another. Right. There's there's a video of that, so if you get the video or audio of that, that's good quality, too. The challenge is, is that 1981 was a great tour, but it's all audience. There's very little, if any, soundboards from the 81 tour. And same thing from the 84 tour. There's really not a lot of soundboards from that one either. So if you like listening to bootlegs, but you can't be bothered listening to audience bootlegs because Mm -hmm. they're just too rough for you, 
you're going to have a little bit of a, of a tough time finding something. Yeah. But they are out there. And like I always recommend, go to vhboots.com, which Midwest Ron runs. And he has great details on all the bootlegs out there, including sound quality. And you'll find some great information. Now, don't be asking Ron if he's got them because he doesn't. And he's certainly not handing them out to anybody right? because he just doesn't have the time for that. Right. But that's a great resource for finding out how good the bootlegs are. Awesome, awesome. Well, I uh, also I want to address, you said uh, you think we're going to have any VH action in 2019. I think that there is a strong possibility that there will be. We addressed this earlier in the news segment. I have faith that Dave is going to return to the band and that the band is going to have some sort of action in 2019. Dave, any last comment on that? Let's hope so. (laughs) <laughs> let's hope so is right so dave is a i'll believe it when i see it type of guy and that wraps up our mailbag segment and we are on to our interview with jack van Gool of the backstage auctions which is the van halen auction that's coming up for noel monk's entire memorabilia collection We are also going to be talking with Noel in regards to that entire collection that he's putting on auction. And like we also mentioned, that he is the ex-manager of Van Halen from 1978 to 1985. And the entire catalog of stuff he's got in there are real incredible rarities. Like I said, folks, nothing you've seen before. This is definitely something worth checking out. And we're going to be speaking directly to Noel all about it, and as well as backstage auctions. And we are excited to bring that to you. Coming up next, take a listen. My idols were never music. I have no musical influences, so to speak. My idols were always people like uh, Genghis Khan or Muhammad Ali or Alexander the Great or the guy who invented McDonald's hamburgers. You know, it was always somebody else far removed from music. And uh, that's why a lot of times if you listen to Van Halen records, there's a lot of things that just seem not to have anything to do with rock and roll. That's because I've never written down any lyrics. A lot, most of them are made up in the studio. Think about the line going up the back of the stockings, you know, and that's sort of, You just make it up. You talk. If you would like to send us a letter asking a question or making a statement or whatever you'd like to say, you can send it to ddunchainedpodcast at gmail.com. Hey, this is Vince Steele of Motley Crue, and you're listening to Dave and Dave on Unchained. Pick up the top seller, Van Halen Rising, how a Southern California backyard party band save heavy metal. The new book by Greg Renoff. Learn about early history of one of America's most decorated rock bands. Renoff goes deep into the Pasadena roots of the Van Halen brothers, David Lee Roth, and Michael Anthony. Go to VanHalenRising.com, where you can get autographed copies of the book, t-shirts, guitar picks, beer koozies, and more. VanHalenRising.com, also available at Amazon.com. Check out the new podcast, The Rock Quarry, your place to hear in-depth interviews with some of Rock's most colorful characters, with your host, entertainment journalist, David J. Crible. The Rock Quarry is available for free on Spreaker and iTunes. You can check us out on Facebook at The Rock Quarry Podcast, on Twitter at Rock Quarry Pod, on Instagram at The Rock Quarry Podcast, or email us at Podcast at gmail.com. Van Halen's sound, if there is any design to it at all, the sound of Van Halen is meant to spill over all over your turntable and ruin the rest of your records. You know, our stuff is made to have that kind of combustion to it, that sound, and you'll lose that if you continue going over and over and 50 times, you'll get it musically correct, Mm -hmm. but it's going to lose some of that pizzazz. It's got to have heart. To it. You know, if you take a Van Halen record and you stick it in your collection, it'll melt all your other records. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here with a gentleman who has an excellent, excellent reputation for his backstage auctions, and that is the name of his company. It's Jacques Van Gool, and he is heading up the Van Halen auction for Noel Monk. So, Jacques, we want to thank you so much for coming on today. 
And thank you for having me on the show. Of course, absolutely. Now, this is a really unique moment for Van Halen fans. And I wanted to ask you, you've been doing this for some time. So have you seen a collection of one band this extensive before? I think I'm fortunate to say yes, but that doesn't mean that this one is, you know, any less exciting than some of the other ones. We've been fortunate to work with what I would call peers of of Noel, uh, meaning managers of legendary bands. A couple that come to mind are, uh, we did an auction for Bill uh, Coyne, obviously best known of, you know, him managing KISS. We did an auction for Herbie Herbert, who had been the longtime manager of Journey. Right. We've done an auction for Walter O'Brien, who managed Pantera. And we even did an auction for the first manager of Motley Crue. In in a way, these auctions were very similar in that, you know, managers have access to very unique memorabilia. Sure. And it's the kind of stuff that you would only find in the possession of a manager. Right. And in, in that regard, Noel's collection, uh, you know, kind of mirrors, they're all different, you know, but in a way it kind of mirrors you know, the, the auctions that we did for, you know, Kiz and Pantera and Motley Crue and Journey, in a way, yes. But as I said, every time you, you have the opportunity to work with a legendary manager, it brings, you know, a whole new slew of types of memorabilia and, and, and historic discoveries, you sure. know. So it's it's exciting for us to do these types of auctions. Sure. And how did you meet Noel and come up with the auction together? You know, he had released the book and we were talking about that at the office. It's great that there, you know, is a book about obviously, you know, one of the greatest bands in in the history of music uh, that was written by somebody from the inner circle. And as you and your listeners will know, it's easy to write a book about a band, but to write a book that is actually you know, factual, that's a different thing. And and I, the, the, what I'm going to say next, I will say with, with the utmost respect, mm-hmm. but musicians themselves are not necessarily the most reliable source when right. it comes to the history of their own band. That's and, very true. You know, and I think that, the, the, you know, there's a, there's, a, there's a whole bunch of obvious reasons for that, but one of them is that, you know, they're artists and they're not necessarily expected to keep track of, you know, historic data or, right. or tidbits and what have you. So, right. you know, to have a guy like Noel write a book like that was so exciting and so insightful, et cetera. So that kind of sparked a bit of a discussion. Through a connection, we got to talk about the idea of, you know, it would really be great to do a Van Halen auction. We weren't even thinking about Noel specifically, but we just brought up the idea of it would be great to do, you know, a Van Halen auction because, you know, it's 2018, you know, it's a 40th anniversary of not so much Van Halen, but you could say it's the 40th anniversary of them you know, releasing the album, going right. on tour and all that stuff. Sure. So, and that actually brought us to, hey, why not Noel? Right. And we kind of looked at each other and said, well, if he's interested, then why not? Sure. You know, so we got introduced and Noel actually, you know, responded from literally from the first moment very positively and said that, you know, he was open to it. Obviously, he wanted to know more about us and all that good stuff. But mm-hmm. I think we caught him at a good time. And, and, you know, like with everything, I always say, you know, opportunities are, you know, often the reflection of being at the right time in the right place, the right moment, the right person, you know, et cetera. And I think, you know, for Noel, he I think he had gotten to a point where, you know, he had saved, you know, all these documents and all this memorabilia. And he finally got to the point where he wanted to do the book. He he wrote the book. It took him a couple of years. I think it was very therapeutic for him, you know, to mm-hmm. to do that. Right. But once once you're done, you know, it's it's like you're closing a chapter for yourself. Sure. And and, and with the closing of that chapter, then kind of becomes, you know, also the issue of okay. You know, why would I keep it? He looked through everything. He used all the data for his book. And I think he was kind of at that point where he said, all right, you know, I think I'm ready now to let go of it. So, as I said, the timing was perfect. You know, as I said, the book was there, the the 40th anniversary of Van Halen and all of that. And so that's that's kind of how it came about. And, And from that point forward, it was actually a pretty 
you know, quick and smooth, you know, decision to do the auction. Now, explain to our listeners how the 